Hello, fifth graders. In the previous video, which was about the factors and multiples of whole numbers, I chose as a segue from that video to this video, the number 17. And here, by the way, is how we spell that word. I just looked up its definition, and it seems to be specific to music or drama. A segue in music is where there's a piece of music that just sort of blends naturally into another piece of music, or a scene in a movie just blends into another scene in a movie. But I, I'm pretty sure that the word is used more generally to mean anything that sort of introduces or uh, leads into something else. And 17, as you recall, when we were trying to identify its factors, the only thing we could come up with was 1 and 17. Well, the number 17 is one of an infinite number of whole numbers that are like that. And so, I want to present you with a definition. You may not be aware as fifth graders that definitions apply in mathematics. You might think of definitions as being something only in English or reading class, or maybe in science. You have definitions of science words or definitions of geography words and so on. But mathematics has definitions as well. And really, the entire structure of mathematics is built on definitions and then some assumptions that we made make, some obvious assumptions that we make, and then along with the definitions, we build the structure of math through what we call reasoning, uh, what makes sense to our, to our brains as we develop the mathematics. But we have to begin somewhere. We begin with definitions, and then later I'll introduce you to the notion that we also have something a little different than definitions, but basic assumptions. All right, so here's a definition for you. Well, I guess I suppose the whole numbers is a definition. We're very familiar with that, though. We don't really have to think of those as a definition. The whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. The three dots indicate that. There are an infinite number of whole numbers. They go on forever. They don't stop. I once had a conversation with a preschool student who was trying to come to terms with this idea that there's no biggest whole number. They go on forever. And one of the things I suggested is, what if you claim that the biggest number is something? Well, I could say, well, what about that number plus one? See, you can always add one to a whole number to get a bigger whole number, so that's one way to understand how they go on forever. But within those whole numbers now, we're going to define a certain special kind of whole number. That special kind of whole number is called a prime number. Here is the way I articulate the definition of prime number. It's defined... The, the idea of it is the same for everybody worldwide. There are a few different ways to actually put the definition into the English language. This is the one that I prefer. A prime number is a whole number greater than one. This is a symbol here. I think you're familiar with it. It means greater than. A, a whole number greater than one whose only two factors are one and itself. That's what a prime number is. It's a pretty simple definition. We're going to talk about why we say that the prime number has to be a whole number greater than 1. We'll talk about that. 17 is greater than 1, and its only two factors are 1 in itself. So it is what we call a prime number. By the way, this is the spelling of that word that's pronounced segue. And... 17 has been the segue from the previous video about factors and multiples to this current video, which is about prime numbers. And also, we might logically ask, here's where the logic of mathematics comes in. Well, okay, whole numbers greater than one, I get that. And some of those are going to be prime because they, they ha only have factors of one and, and itself. But what about the other whole numbers? Do we have a name for those? And we do. So let's take a little bit of further look into this topic. 
I've put the definition in an abbreviated form at the top of the board to remind us of what a prime number is. Let's try to identify the prime numbers if we can. So the definition says it has to be a whole number greater than one, so we'll start with two. Is two a prime number? What are the factors of two? One times two. Two is a prime number. So we'll start to list here the prime numbers. Three. Is three prime? Well, the only two whole numbers that multiply to three are three and one. One times three. What about four? No. Four is not a prime number because two times two is four. So it has a factor other than one in itself. Four has two as a factor, so it's not prime. What about five? Five is prime. The only two whole number factors of five are one times five. What about six? Well, six is one times six, but it's also two times three. Six is not prime. Seven. Seven is prime. The only two whole numbers that multiply to seven are one in itself. What about eight? Eight is not prime. It has two as a factor, right? Now, we're going to start to make some generalizations already. What about nine? So you, you might have suspected here, when you saw three, five, seven, maybe you thought the next number in that sequence would be nine. Well, if we were identifying the odd whole numbers, we would include one, and we would say one, three, five, seven, nine. Those are the odd whole numbers. But nine, it's odd, but it's not prime. Why is nine not prime? Three times three. So we're going to skip nine. We've already skipped eight. We're going to skip nine. Ten. Ten is not prime. Two times five is ten. Eleven. Eleven is prime. The only two whole numbers that multiply to 11 are 1 and 11. 12 is not prime. 13. 13 is prime. Okay, Let, let's, let's look at another uh, generalization that we can make. 2 is prime because it fits the definition. It's greater than 1, and its only two factors are 1 in itself. But all the rest of the numbers that we've identified so far as prime are odd. Now, why is that? Think about that. We skipped 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We're going to skip 14. We're going to skip 16, 18, 20, 22. None of those can possibly be prime. Why not? Because they have 2 as a factor. Now, they might have a lot of other numbers as factors as well, as well but... What we know as even numbers have always have two as a factor. That's what it means to be even. Two is the only prime number that is even. And, and you should not just memorize that, but believe that it's true, that it has to be that way. Okay? So from now on, I won't even consider any of the even numbers. We'll just skip right over them. But also notice this. This is sometimes when people are first learning about prime numbers, they, they might make this mistake. They might think, well, all the odd numbers are prime. That is not true. We skipped nine because nine can be represented as three times three. The whole number nine, even though it's odd, it has three as a factor, so it's not prime. We got 13 here. We're going to skip all the evens from now on. Make sure you understand why we're skipping all the evens. No even number other than 2 can be prime. We're going to skip 15. You know why. 15 is odd, but just like 9, we're going to skip it. Because 15 is 3 times 5. It has factors other than 1 in itself. 17 is prime. So the next prime number after 13 is 17. 19 is also prime. There are no whole there are no whole numbers that multiply to 17 other than 1 and 17. That's that was our segue, right? 19 is the same, only 1 times 19. What about 21? 21 is not prime, you know that. 3 times 7 is 21. So 
We're skipping all the evens, and then the odds, we have to stop and think about it. 21 is not prime. 23 is... We're going to skip the next two odd numbers, right? We're going to skip 25, because 25 has 5 as a factor. And we're going to skip 27. 3 times 9 is 27. So the next prime number after 23 is 29. And then 31. 31 is prime. But 33 is not. 33 is 3 times 11. Now, I'm going to put three dots here. Because I want to tell you, you're a little bit too young to look at the proof. When you're a little bit older, you might want to explore the, the, the ancient proof that there are an infinite number of prime numbers. I try my best, as much as possible, to explain or prove or demonstrate why things are true. But there are certain times when it's just a little bit beyond the age that you're at. But you can trust me, there are an infinite number of primes. That's what the three dots mean here. But as far as the pattern of them, you see, when we put the three dots, when we're identifying the whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then we put the three dots. We know how that continues because we know how to count. How the primes continue, like how they're distributed is, is a big question in number theory that mathematicians have dealt with for a long time. So, so it, 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 it's a very complex question as to just what is the pattern of these primes going forward. But there are an infinite number of them. And uh, I want to make one other observation, and then we're going to talk about what we call the whole numbers greater than one that are not prime. We have a name for those, so we're going to get to that. But I also want to identify something else. And you may have enough to kind of see it right now with the ones I put up here. Let's look at the digits that are in the ones place after that five right there. Five is prime. It fits the definition. It's greater than one, and the only two factors of five are one and five. So it's, five. it's prime. Let's look at the digits in the ones place of the prime numbers that are greater than 5. We've got a 7, a 1, a 3, a 7, a 9, a 3, a 9, a 1. That's actually pretty nice. I think we have two of each in, in this limited list. This is just the very few of the first primes. We've got a 1 and a 1 in the 1's place, a 3 and a 3, a 7 and a 7, a 9 and a 9. Now, again, uh, the, the the one, three, seven, nine, how they're distributed, it, 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 there's no pattern to it. But we can make this statement. All prime numbers greater than five have in their ones place a one, three, seven, or nine. Now, that that's only four digits. That's kind of an extraordinary fact, isn't it? Here are the ten digits that make up our number system. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. That's it. Just those 10 digits. Let's think about whole numbers and the digit in the ones place. Okay. Now, I'm going to cross out the 0, the 2, the 4, the 6, and the 8. That's half of them. That's five of the ten digits. I'm crossing them out because other than two itself, other than two itself, no prime number can have in its ones place a zero, two, four, six, or eight. That's why I crossed them out. Okay? And you can see up here, the ones I've done so far, in the ones place, there are no zeros, twos, fours, sixes, or eights other than the two itself. Okay? And this should make sense to you. Because any whole number that ends in a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8 has 2 as a factor, so it cannot be prime other than 2 itself, because 2 fits the definition. And there's one more digit that we can cross off. Well, let, let, let's look at what we've seen. Uh, 7, 1, 3, 9, right? 5 is prime. It's greater than 1, and its only two factors are 
1 and 5. But I'm going to cross off the 5 as well as the even digits. Because other than 5 itself, no whole number that has a 5 in the 1's place can be prime. Why not? We did this in the previous video, didn't we? That little sing-songy thing that we all learn when we're very young. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Okay? Any number that has a 5 in the 1's place has 5 as a factor. Now, the ones that have 0 in the 1's place also has five, have 5 as a factor, but they also have 2. So we've already eliminated the 0 based on the fact that any whole number ending in 0 has 2 as a factor. It also has 5 as a factor. But those whole numbers that end in 5 all have 5 as a factor, no matter how big. 3,715 is a 5 in the 1's place. That is not prime, because you can represent that as 5 times some whole number. Want me to show off? <laughs> do you want to show off? Can you, can you do that? Can you figure out mentally what the whole number is that you multiply 5 by to get this? Well, we're going we're gonna to learn the, and review the long division algorithm this year. If I ever ask you to do 3,715 divided by 5, you should know there's going to be no remainder. We're going to get a whole number. Well, put a 7 there. 7 times 5 is 35. Subtracting it 2, bring down the 1. 4 times 5 is 20, getting close to that 21 right there. Subtracting it 1, bring down the 5. And a 3. 3 times 5 is 15. Subtract here and get 0. I ran out of room a little bit there. But, you know, going through the algorithm and getting the fact that it's, it's 743 that we multiply by 5 to get the 3,715 is one thing. But just knowing that there is a whole number you multiply by 5 to get this is a valuable piece of information. Okay? Uh, this, this number ends in 5, so it automatically has 5 as a factor. Now, it might have a lot of other factors, too, but it definitely has 5 as a factor, so it cannot be prime. That's why I crossed out that 5. All right? So there are a few things that we've learned about prime numbers. Um, there are an infinite number of them. And any prime number greater than 5 has in its 1's place only a 1, 3, 7, or 9. Those are the only ones left. 1, 3, 7, 9. Make sure you not only know that, but you understand it. I'm going to make a suggestion to you, ladies and gentlemen. If you Google first thousand primes, or just first hundred primes, whatever you like, uh, the, the first hit that you'll get is a website that I'm pretty sure we can rely on. And you go to that website, and you're going to see the screen filled up by a whole bunch of numbers, the prime numbers, the first thousand of them. Or maybe, maybe there are websites out there that go the first 10,000 or the first 100,000. Whatever that list is, whether it's, whether it's the first 100, the first 1,000, the first 10,000 primes. And remember, there are an infinite number of them. But the list is always going to begin like this. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31. Uh, if, if you, f you know, fill your screen with a whole bunch of other prime numbers, test the knowledge that you now have. They will all end, once you get past 5, they will all end in that 1, 3, 7, or 9. So that's sort of an interesting thing for you to check out on your own. So for the moment, we're excluding 0 and 1. 0 and 1 are special. We'll talk about that at the very end. Um, and, you know, we've got these prime numbers, but then we've got other numbers that we skipped, other whole numbers we skipped. We skipped all the evens. We skipped... Any that end in five, um, and uh, we skipped uh, 21, even though 21 ends in a one, it's not prime. Well, what about all those numbers we skipped? Can, can we give them a name? And we can. They're called composite numbers. Now, this English word composite, 
I'm going to give you a very informal, easy definition for the word composite. It means made up of other things. Um, I can remember going way back as a youth, if I were watching some TV show or movie about um, police officers and criminals, that's a very popular <laughs> topic for TVs and movies and books and so on. If, uh, if a witness saw somebody that might have committed a crime and this in the days before cell phones when everybody had a camera with them, uh, often, most of the time, there'd be no photo of this uh, potential criminal. So the witness would be brought into the police station and sit down with somebody and make what's called a composite sketch. And the way that worked is there'd be like this page of, um, of um, little um, representations, artistic representation of eyes and noses and ears and mouths and maybe facial hair if, if that's appropriate and, and, and hair. So the, the police officer would help the, the witness choose the correct eyes, the correct nose, the correct ears and so on until the witness would say, yeah, that, it, that, the person I saw looks like that. And sometimes those composite sketches could, could get very close to what, what the person looked like. It, they're called composite sketches because of this putting together of a certain nose, a certain eye. So composite sketches made up of those, those items on the face. And the composite numbers, what are they made up of? So a composite police sketch is made up of face, facial features. Okay, well, what are composite numbers made up of? And uh, let, let's let's give a formal definition to composite numbers. A composite number is a whole number greater than one that is not prime. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty easy, right? It's greater than one and not prime. So it's everything else. It's every other whole number greater than one other than the prime one. Let's try to get an understanding of this word composite. Let's take the number 21, for example, which is not prime. We know, you know, that 21 is not prime. Why is 21 not prime? 21 equals 3 times 7. It is composed or made up of a three times a seven. That's why numbers like that are called composite. And it is often said that the prime numbers are the building blocks of all of the whole numbers. And the next time, it's going to be our segue, <laughs> I guess maybe I'm gonna to continue to use that word, our segue into the next video, exploring more about prime numbers, composite numbers, and so on, um, will be this notion of the composite numbers being made up of, because that's what the word composite means, composite numbers being made up of the prime numbers being multiplied together. That's our segue. I'm going to try to remember in that next video, that will be the appropriate time to talk about why zero and one are sort of in a class by themselves. We don't even really consider them when we're talking about prime or composite because, you know, prime numbers are greater than one and the composite numbers are greater than one and not prime. So we'll talk about next time, zero and one, why are they special? And we'll talk about this notion of the prime numbers being building blocks of all of the other whole numbers in terms of multiplication. And that word composite is related to that. The prime numbers make up the composite numbers, just like nose, eyes, ears makes up a composite sketch. So we'll call it a day for now, but our journey in talking about prime numbers will continue. Prime numbers are 
an important part of middle school math and fun and I think easy. Fun and easy. Bye-bye.